Hello and good evening. You're watching the Policy Times, world's first policy and development media. I am Akram Hak, founder and editor of the Policy Times. Every day in the evening, we organize this global policy web talk series. And under this program, we invite the experts from different domain to discuss about the policy and practice issues. Today, we have decided to talk on one of the most important topics and one of the most important sectors which are going to have massive impact in the society in the future. I mean, e-waste is not something new. Uh, it, there has been enough talks happening in India and across the world. The, if you see India, India today have more than 1 billion mobile phones. The number of laptop and uh, computer usage in the country is equally very high. The other is the kind of telecommunication equipments that we use is also extremely high. So now when we use them, that is fine. After the use, when they become the waste, then what do we do that? Because there are enough uh, healthcare disadvantage if we uh, you know, just throw it out in the, in, the, in the open place. So we need to recycle the electronic waste that we create every year, every day, in fact, in the country. And there has to be a proper process of it. Now, what is the situation of e-waste? How? What is the amount of e-waste we generate? Like, and, and what should be the best way to recycle the e-waste? That we will discuss. And we have two veteran uh, with us today joined here. I want to introduce uh, Dr. Ashok Kumar, who is the vice chairman of Greenscape Eco Management Private Limited, one of North India's largest e-waste recycling platform and organization who has been uh, continuously working in Delhi and NCR region uh, to recycle um, you know, thousands of tons of e-waste that we generate in this belt of the country in North India. And uh, with him, we have Mr. Purushottaman Venugopal, who is the EHS head uh, of at, at one of India's largest uh, company, uh, Blue Star Limited. I mean, uh, I, th I think we all know what is Blue Star and the kind of uh, air conditioning equipments that they produce is wonderful. So two experts to talk on very important topic that uh, we have decided. I'll give a couple of facts just to set the tone and background. India approximately generates 2 million tons of e-waste, as I told you. Now, among the e-waste, Computer devices account for 70% of this e-waste. 12% comes from the telecom sector, 8% comes from the medical equipment, and the rest, 7% comes from the electric equipment. And if you talk about who are the main generators of e-waste, government, public uh, sector companies, and private sector companies produce approximately 70% of the e-waste. And individual households contribute around 16%. Uh, you know, if you see, SOCM report uh, has recently come out and said that the compounding annual growth rate of the e-waste generation in the country is a hoping 30%. That means, I mean, already this report said that by 2020, India will be creating 5.2 million tons of U.S., which we have already touched. Now, the most important factor here would be that we need to understand is that 95% of these e-waste that we generate are often arguably said that illegally recycled by the informal sector, which means there is a tremendous potential of the formal sector to recycle this, which also means that India can generate massive amount of jobs and huge uh, kind of business uh, through this sector. So with this, uh, I want to come to my panel and uh, the first part would be, I would request uh, our guests and experts to kindly introduce yourself in three to five minutes, and then we will go to the main uh, theme address. So I'll request Mr. Venugopal, if you can kindly introduce yourself, like from your education till your co corporate journey. So in three to five minutes. Okay. First of all, good evening. Uh, thank you, Mr. Akram, for giving this opportunity. And thank you all the viewers, uh, in spite of the pandemic situation, you're joining. Hope you're all doing well and staying safe. Okay, basically myself, Pushwataman, uh, I am basically from Chennai. Uh, I have done my 
uh, graduation may be in mechanical engineering almost i have 22 years of experience in the ehs front i also done a regional labor institute in chennai it is comes under ministry of labor and employment i am a gold medalist in that i have also done my mba in pondicherry university uh, and also msc ecology and environment uh, so this is the, my just education background if you see as a certification point of view in ehs uh, i also done the csk certified safety professional from usa this is one of the uh, top most body for uh, ehs uh, professional certifications in the world correct and also done my iso 45001 uh, so occupational health and safety management system and iso 14001 Uh, for e- environmental management system as a lead auditor uh, i am also closely associating with the cai uh, southern region i am a lead assessor for ehs excellence award as uh, a southern region and also ca environment task force committee member southern region and also in a minus i am also an indian uh, associate american society of safety professionals is a professional body in india india chapter is there in that time i'm acting as a treasurer an executive committee and a treasurer member so this is the brief about the associations coming to my employment uh, overall i have 22 years of experience in that at all uh, initial 12 11 years i was with the large and to limited with various projects in india and abroad Uh, i can say i was associated with the kensington redevelopment of kensington old stadium barbados in 2007 and the world cup cricket was played okay i was the uh, project in charge uh, safety in charge head for the that uh, redevelopment of the stadium the melanty side and also done my uh, uh, kingdom of saudi arabia ksc work with ps and ksc uh, so after that i worked in a brief in nokia for a year uh, in a super mother factory and uh, finally last uh, almost uh, one decade i completed uh, recently with the blue star i'm taking care of the uh, product sales and service uh, ehs for the pan india and also we are doing for the corporate role also part year corporate role so Thank this you. is a uh, brief introduction Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Vedant Gopal. Uh, that's quite comprehensive, and your affiliation and association with a lot of national and international organization also shows that how active you are in in improving and contributing in this sector. I now come to our next guest, uh, the man with a golden heart. I often say, uh, Dr. Ashok Kumar, one of the most literate men uh, in the field. uh and who does not just work in the sector just uh, you know uh, for business he believes in making a clean and green india and that is why he has chosen uh, the e waste management as one of his core priority of life and he's contributing in north india uh, dr uh, kumar your brief introduction and your journey uh, from education till till where you are Yeah, Dr. Ashok Kumar, can you hear us? Indeed. Yeah. Yeah, we are. Do you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yes. There is a slight voice issue. Yeah. Okay. I think you got uh, disconnected. Yeah. Thank you. Can you join us back soon? Yeah. and uh, then what we will do we will request him to his introduction to add in this theme address and then uh, we we can start with uh, uh, mr venugo okay he is coming back yeah please unmute yourself sir please unmute you are, you are muted actually ashok ji you are muted you know what happened is that in the, there is a heavy rains and uh, the right. cables and all that must be in great problem of airtel so yeah. anyhow uh, thank you very much mr akram and uh, thank you very much i was very impressed uh, with mr prashotham that uh, he has uh, done his mechanical engineering and uh, then he has come to the ehs and uh, fantastic uh, i started my career in 1977 and i was uh, the management trainee of modi group of companies and i brought in uh, the few uh, big collaborations uh, from the cement from uh, uh, blue and uh, you know this um, uh, big, big companies from uh, uk and also the modi rubber tire factory was constructed and it, i was involved in that and it was from the continental hamburg germany and i have been associated of uh, installation of the best plants which are working on the clean energy and the clean process from the japan which was my last assignment with modi group in uh, m- bringing the best membrane cell technology for caustic soda plant and that was the first japanese company came after the maruti 
there was no other uh, japanese were coming and uh, we were able to bring them in 1990 to install their best membrane cell technology which is replacing the mercury cell so during that time i understood that how the mercury can hit very badly to the people when it goes into the earth and how the lead and other things can carry out in the health problems so at that point of time i talked to my son that we should do something in the recycling and we should do something that how we can protect the environment at that time uh, he was young and he was studying and after the study he went to the ibm and from there he brought this idea of bringing the e waste technology to india he was working on a supercomputers he was a computer science graduate from university of california so he has given me this idea so i'm obliged to him but basically he is looking after that and i am helping him uh, in uh, bringing this uh, uh, e waste a um, uh, lot of uh, 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 ethical things which has to be brought in into the system and the procedures by ministry of electronics and it so i am taking care with the niti ayog and other uh, government bodies that what should be the e waste rules because i have been working with the uk and uh, america that how their laws have come so this is my journey and now we have established this company in 2007 he established that company at that time i was just finishing uh, the process of selling the caustic soda plant so now so he uh, manages the complete and we have a capacity of 44100 and uh, the greenscape eco management caters to the multinational companies starting from lg havels uh samsung hp microsoft uh, canon brother all these it as well as and the consumer uh, who are the bulk consumers like uh, capgemini and uh, tcs infosys and uh, wipro plus a uh, lot of uh, companies which are in scz so we help them to process their uh, material to recycle in the best possible manner and we have a tie up for recovery of precious metals with umicore and uh, Uh, Arabis of Germany, and for lithium and iron batteries, we have a collaboration with the Nippon Batteries of Japan because of my earlier uh, collaboration and experience with them. So we are working in a very uh, integrated recycling facility where we have our um, uh, uh, e-waste as a main product, and out of that we recover uh, plastic, which we are also recycling along with our facility. so that we can have a special uh, the, the 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 what you can say the engineer plastics so our aim is that if the tub has come or the air conditioner has come the the copper or the aluminum whichever is being recovered should go back as their compressors so we wanted to go for uh, reverse engineering this is our main aim at the moment we have achieved that yes we are able to recover engineer plastic from the tub and also from the refrigerator so this is our small uh, journey from 2007 till date and uh, thanks to the government of india and the honorable prime minister that he is giving lot of emphasis on the environment and the economy to go together and we are also following the same uh, footprints and we are trying that how we can protect the environment so that our future children should not suffer because of the climate change which is happening due to the various actions taken by us uk or the advanced uh, country so we are just trying and the carbon neutrals you know mr prashottam is uh, going to cause a lot of problem to the countries and uh, our honorable prime minister has accepted uh, this paris um, uh, accord where he said that by 2020 we will be carbon neutral so the recycling will be the only way by which this carbon neutral can come to a very positive way so this is our introduction uh, mr akram thank you thank you so much uh, dr dr ashok kumar wonderful uh, brief and and also that shows the your vision and and the kind of direction you are going towards and absolutely we need uh, leaders entrepreneurs like you in this field i'll come back to uh, purushottam ji now to start and and deliver his main theme address i would request you to give a complete uh, or or a comprehensive overview about how we are managing e waste and what are the policy and practice issues that that we we plan today to discuss me yeah yeah 
ओके सी कमिंग टू दि इ वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट एंड हो मिस्टर अशोक कुमार इज देर इज वेरी वेटर एंड द रीसाइक्लर दो विद दे आर द मेन हार्ट ऑफ रीसाइक्लिंग सो बिफोर गोइंग टू दिस सो फॉर द सेक ऑफ द वीवर्स सेलेटिक व्हाट वी ई वेस्ट इज डेंजरस Hmm. It's okay. So just I have some small uh, presentation. If you allow me, so I will share the presentation for the viewers, uh, for the sake of viewers. Why we are uh, giving the trust on EVS? The trust. Why the EVS need to be recycled? Why can't? Uh, what will happen? What is the impact if it does not happen? Just I will have small uh, presentation. I will share. Thanks. yeah uh, for the sake of time i'll just uh, quickly run because it should not be the presentation point of view but just to for the uh, this one and the knowledge here already mr akram also given some statistics about uh, the millions uh, 5.1 million uh, tons uh, generated by india per year okay uh, so this is some briefly is a we waste means in today's world we cannot imagine a day or even a minute without your uh, any device which runs on electrical and electronics even the seminar or virtual things you know what we are doing now it's also it's a is electronic device electrical electronic device okay so that is some people even so familiar with that if no mobile is not in their packet they feel something the missing in their body organ i can say such we are so accustomed to the electronic gadgets such that even the now students our children attending online classes which never we thought of we yes, are against okay so anyhow so these are the e waste so why the e waste waste electrical and electronic equipments anything is working on electrical and electronic gadgets it's e waste and these are the some of the uh, all the day to day items whether at home or whether at office so everything covered under e waste whether and only even people need to understand even the cfl compact fluorescent bulbs lamps cfls mercury lamps because contains mercury it's covered under e waste in india it covered so we should not think because of uh, cfl it's not under us even the cfl also covered under for the layman for everyone general public i'm just giving this trust points actually and even the batteries okay so this is little older statistics earlier it was told 40 million tons per annum us generated globally now it is 50 million even 50 million is already we surpassed in the 2020 itself before 2020 itself 50 million tons every year uh, generating us across the globe and if you see the worst point is only 15 to 20 percentage earlier they told 27 even it's now lesser than 15 percentage of total generation e waste is only recycled across the globe italy this overall so some country will developing country will have better uh, recycling percentage some countries will have lesser percentage like us but uh, overall 15 percentage only recycled it's very very uh, poor and uh, india is that time it was fifth position maybe now we are moved to the fourth position in terms of generation of the e waste So this was the 50 million metric tons, and all those. If you equal one, uh, it's equal to the total 1 lakh 25 thousand jumbo jets. If you convert it to India, how many jumbo jets it will take from that 50 million metric tons? And also the the numbers in the representation of one ton, how many uh, TVs, how much desktops, how much keyboards? 3,300 keyboards, 8,000 mobile phones. Just one ton of electric waste. See, such a massive things are happening in the field, and uh, uh, every two years. nowadays we are changing the mobile phone so even the personally 2 to 3 years except some good brand i can say okay so that is a very common now because of the changing technology and other uh, compelling reasons but see the how fast we are generating the e waste now i'm coming to an important point why e waste is dangerous why what is the purpose if you see here just a couple of minutes it's, uh, it's can uh, most of the electrical and electronic gadgets contain lead say one of the heavy metal it falls under the heavy metal group and lead is highly dangerous to the health it is especially central nervous system and entire body it's and that is so that is the reason uh, earlier lead was added to the petrol you may be aware very long back 10 years back tetraethyl lead tel was added to the petrol for combustion efficiency in internal combustion engines now later they found it is a health hazard so it's avoided you can see even the petrol bunks some of the days we see lead free petrol lead free petrol now even the toys some of the toys imported from some countries it was banned because of it contain lead content so lead is very dangerous to the health actually that is the reason uh, it is the next is cadmium it is a carcinogenic cadmium it is, uh, then mercury no doubt mercury in cfl and other things it's also dangerous to the things and bfr so bfr is a brominated flame retardant this is the coatings given to the products like pcb and to retard the fire in case of any event of fire it should retard the fire so for the purpose is bromine containing uh, painting is given is a bromine it's a halogen under the halogen family so that's also very dangerous when this this will uh, put under burning it will create dioxins the by product of combustion it's highly dangerous dioxin 
and Mr. Asok Kumar has said he will know all those detail. And beryllium. So some of the things, and beryllium is a carcinogen. It means if you export to the beryllium, it will create, it gives a cancer for the uh, stipulated period of exposure and inhalation. Okay. So because of these dangerous elements are there in the uh, chemicals, uh, the electrical and electronic equipments, it need proper recycling. If it is not really led into the local unorganized way of recycling, then it may create the problem. So again, whatever the metal will show the lithium. Now the entire world is going in the lithium for a lithium ion batteries or lithium ferrous oxide batteries because of the electrical uh, two wheelers and three wheelers. The whole world is going on begin that. So same thing, the consistent organic pollutants and the polyaromatic hydrocarbons. So these are the elements available in the almost day-to-day -day life. And I just need not to mention all those things here. This uh, just the expanded form of the chemicals and the PCBs. One more name, main of PCBs, we know printed circuit boards, but here the chemical name is polychlorinated biphenyls. Polychlorinated biphenyls here. So these are all very dangerous. So the, the, the need of our why we need an ECG before going to the regulatory framework or other uh, international national uh, conventions, what is the need of our is the recycling need to be improved or encouraged, I can say. So why is the need? Uh, because it keeps toxins uh, 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 entering into our ecosystem. It could be land, it could be water, or it could be uh, air. So, so it, uh, it need to be avoid the ecosystem damage, pollution. And we need to pollution by emission of the uncontrolled uh, burning and also the discarded parts can be recycled already Mr. Asok Mahatot, the recycle that can be part of the original material so that the natural depletion will be avoided. We are using the extracting the same materials, we were avoiding the depletion of natural resources. And finally, even uh, the some of the PCBs will have a gold, silver, very, very uh, trash of uh, this uh, earth metal, mineral metals. So that can be extracted and we take the money value, value added product. So, so because these are the things, these are the benefits of the recycling as proposed to by the uh, international bodies. So same thing here. So we, uh, the unorganized way of recycling given to local kapadiwala or are any other uh, environmentally unfriendly manner, unsound manner, it may damage our entire ecosystem. Then ultimately we are under tremendous stress and also our future generation. It's not a sustainable way. When something is not sustainable, we may enjoy some benefit today. And in our future generation will not be the, uh, in the position to enjoy what we're enjoying today. This is the sustainable of nature. So these are, the, again, the, the acidification of soil. People use the solid uh, acid baths and all those things. Then the soil acidification, the fertileness of the soil will be affected. Then uh, entirely the pro production of the agriculture, everything will be get affected. Okay, so how we can proceed further? One is education among the people, not only the, uh, to the uh, what can I say, commercial establishment, all the industry bodies, even at the individual level at home, even at the municipal solid waste, uh, at the corporation level, so that each and every citizen aware of the e-waste. Okay. The next thing is accumulation. So how we can do the channelization of the e-waste? Then the connectivity, the logistics arrangement is very, very important. Without logistics and without anything, uh, e-waste cannot be collected. It's a big uh, topic and a billionaire, a million question how to do the logistics arrangement and reverse logistics and the donation. So somebody have this or those. Okay, this continuing the same thing, this uh, health effects, I can say. And uh, so the main thing is uh, it's going uh, affect almost all parts of our body, not only uh, one particular tar target organ, everything is affected. In India, okay. <clears throat> In India, we have the e-waste management rules uh, is being enforced uh, for the taking care of e-waste and the major amendment done uh, reintroduced in the year 2016 with the amendment in 2018 and the, the department which is taking care of the e-waste management rules is no doubt is Ministry of Environment, Forest, Climate Change, MOEFCC. Uh, and uh, under Ministry of Environment, Forest, Climate Change, uh, Pollution Control Board, Central Pollution Control Board called the CPCB, they are the enforcing authority in India. So they are given the uh, powers and they are given the responsibility to for the uh, Pan India, India implementation. Under them, there are state ministries and state pollution control boards and the pollution control committee in the Union Territory, they are working for them. So this is the basically uh, uh, the arrangement. So the major thing is the e-waste is health. So we want health. I'm telling you uh, whether you are aware, uh, the, one of the worrisome part in e-waste uh, identified by the United States is uh, United Nations, United Nations, not United, States, United Nations, is the illegal trading, illegal yeah. trading of the e-waste. Means dumping the e-waste from developed nations to underdeveloping nations. And uh, uh, there is no surprise, uh, already some movies also have made uh, based on this theme. In Tamil, it's happened, Telugu, I don't know, in Hindi also it may be dubbed, in Singham 3, 
we have seen one of the Surya's film here. So it is made only because of the e-waste, import of e-waste from Australia, and the whole film is made of uh, based on this theme. So it's a, it's really it's a uh, painful thing, and United Nations also find it is one of the uh, uh, painful is how to address this illegal trading or illegal uh, doing this kind of e-waste trading or e-waste dumping. or e waste importing from one country to other country because the cost of uh, recycling in statistics telling in us that time it was 30 us dollars one ton of e waste recycling cost in us cost 30 us dollar whereas in uh, under developing countries like uh, asian nations and some of our country other countries it's only costing 2 dollar as per their statistics 2 dollar 2 us dollar per uh, ton i am not sure in charge of marasa to just say this is the statistics i come across from the united nations website actually so that is encourages people to re- do re- this kind of illicit uh, this kind of trading legal trading of e waste and importing so that's one important thing okay so coming to this uh, uh, le- le- regulatory or legal framework we are body to the united nations environment program and other conventions basel and the paris agreement all those things so the, the key responsibility given to the manufacturer is in the name of epr extended producer responsibility they have identified some of the products uh, in the schedule 1 uh, there are two category information technology category and the consumer durable category electrical category so in that they are given who are the producers of these devices you should get the epr extended producer responsibility and it is based on the how much quantity you have sold into the market for the uh, average life of your product if your product is 10 years then you have to go back last 10 years how much your products put into the market and they take the average quantity and the, then you they are given the target every year 10% 20% 30% 40% 50 increasing percentage and up to 70% is going so the time being so that was the target given to the uh, producers the producers has to maintain as per the epr the uh, recycling of e waste if they are failing to do then their uh, cpcb having authority even to uh, cancel the license and they cannot do any kind of single material importing also so it is also linked with the importing import of raw material or spare parts and uh, other things so uh, this is the way that they put in the check so the epr authorization they are giving generally the epr uh, authorization they are giving for 5 years it's not one year to it's a 5 years plan because it's a detailed uh, document you have to create a uh, five years plan actually it is uh, valid for the five years and uh, the other one uh, for the benefit or to do the, the epr implementation they also given inserted on class called pro any of mr ashok kumar sir sir pro uh, producer responsible organization they can engage they can recycle the product their own or as a manufacturer they can engage some organization as a pro tool taker of the, this uh, uh, e waste recycling it's almost similar to the carbon credit so somebody do the project for some other nations and the nations will uh, implement the or uh, invest the amount they will take the carbon credit it's like a carbon credit this is the thing and the recyclers uh, there is a new uh, uh, lucrative business and uh, again there are a lot of illegalities there as mr dr asok kumar rightly said that uh, it is a very nascent stage it still need under a, for, i can say for streamlining the business so uh, maybe they are pioneers in the recycling there are a lot of uh, uh, illegal things also there in the recycling we need to st- look into streamliner but finally i would like to say one of the important class provided in the e waste management rules is bulk consumer so other than producers see uh, as a government organization mr akram rightly told in the beginning of the session itself uh, government bodies all institutions educational institutions healthcare facilities so any company or any government body which is having turnover of more than 1 crore in a year any body having turnover of more than 1 crore in a year or they are employed more than 20 employees they fall under the bulk consumer category either 1 crore turnover per year or 20 people employed and then that institution that entity that establishment comes under the category of bulk consumer for bulk consumer also uh, the government currently they given the responsibility of filing the returns like we are filing income tax returns it returns some of you might already done or some in the process for the last year so same way uh, they have to file the uh, this e waste returns to the cpcb and also maintain the records but here there is no license for bulk consumer for bulk consumer currently there is only the uh, maintenance of the records and uh, things just for uh, one of the key element in uh, e waste rules is rohs restriction of production of hazardous substances so by this way they identified six elements what we saw earlier in the slides lead cadmium mercury hexavalent chromium means the chromium uh, is different chromiums available hexavalent means six covalent electrons available in the last orbit of the uh, atom this hexavalent chromium 
and the PB polybrominated biphenyls and this PBR polybrominated diphenyl ethers. These six elements identified by internationally, they are given the percentage, how much allowed in your product, whether you are designing any product in India or importing anything from outside India, the product, the spare parts, anything should not contain more than 0.1% of all these elements except the cadmium where 0.01 percentage it's almost negligible you can say 0.01 percent is almost negligible but still it's not acceptable more than 0.01 very very traction okay so the designing of the product the manufacturer has this responsibility they have to maintain this rohs declaration and the pollution control board they come anytime they take the product into they put under test and the test fails then it will be a like in the automobile how they're doing recalling the products then the producers do the recall the products they have to address the design and again reintroduce the products so it's a big cycle so nobody will not deviate here all the big manufacturers reputed manufacturers they will uh, comply with and declare it below well below this limit so this is happening by the producer said i can say so just uh, already we discussed the schedule as per the evs to rules what is mentioned in india is it first category is it ew information technology category we can see your laptops pc cpu personal computing all those things and the second category what they mentioned is consumer electrical and electric, electronics waste w stands for waste so hew4 so now only these two categories are there but there is some exemption they are given time being maybe for the special uh, regional implementation of previous rules for air conditioners they only considered all air conditioners excluding centralized air conditioning plant so the company is producing chillers is currently they are not covered under this rule in the in the current scenario it may be changed and it may be extended to for them also and the refrigerator domestic only is mentioned domestic refrigerator no commercial and kind of refrigerators timing is not mentioned so this is the initial phase uh, they introduced uh, and again uh, for every recycling by the recycler they have the uh, uh, form 6 manifest will be given and it comes with the four colors to indicate where the uh, recycled material is going on and the finery will end up with the green color this is called green certificate the recyclers used to give the uh, collection from the, the collector the green certificate finally it's recycled so there are four colors that are maintained by the uh, cpcb uh, we have to maintain their manifest and again see this is a increasing percentage 30 percentage 40 percentage 50 percentage 70 percentage of the target year so the targets are massive so for the producers uh, found a little bit uh, challenging targets going forward but no other option we have to bound to do for the sake of mother earth and society cause and for the interest of a nation so these are the united nations uh, some of the things Uh, uh, what they are recommending, how to uh, do the stakeholders engagement, and uh, all those things it has happened here. I, I told already this United Nations illegal trading dumping is one of the major concern for United Nations. How to uh, do this? Just before uh, ending this, I just have small video. I just uh, 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 share this video. Is it visible? Yeah, we can watch. It. Yeah, yeah, very good.
Okay, so that was the end of my uh, small this uh, session thank and uh, thank you uh, uh, we will discuss again some more questions thank you thank you uh, mr venugopal a very comprehensive in fact uh, outlook of the entire us industry i will uh, come back to all the crucial points that you have mentioned when i give the closing comment now i quickly go to our next speaker dr ashok kumar and now we heard about the basic parameter and basic framework now you being at the center stage of recycling uh, in the recycling business and since last uh, since 2017 uh, you are working in in this sector 7 or 17 you mentioned i think you forgot now from here how do you see the recycling sector is emerging as i see there is immense potential of this market to grow even further how are you doing it what are the policy implications and how do we address this important sector Dr. Ashok Kumar. Uh, thank you, Mr. Akram, and uh, it was an excellent uh, presentation by Mr. Venugopal ji. He has uh, shown a real uh, story about the e-waste. So I'll take it uh, further what he has stated because it is uh, now clear that it's a real problem how to handle the electronic waste. And he has already mentioned about what is the electronic waste and how it is to be taken care. Of. i'll just take um, 10 to 15 minutes to brief about my perspective on the electronic waste and what government is thinking and what are the remedies available to the producers as well as to the recyclers in the next 5 years because the epr design came in 2016 and 2011 uh, rules were amended and uh, verified and checked and the 2016 was the important uh, day of uh, 24th march 2016 when these rules were brought in and these rules were excellent um, uh, framework which was discussed with various authorities but it was based on the experiences of the europe and the european countries uh, you can understand that what they did with uh, developing countries everybody knows that uh, at their cost we are suffering but you know one point of the other every country which is developing has to become developed countries and they will do the same thing but now there is a break on the environment and uh, the people have now started thinking in a positive way you see that electronic waste which is considered in europe is a different definition and what indian scenario is only 21 items has been considered as a electronic waste as per the schedule 1 now this schedule 1 was based on the experience of the indian uh, attitude of the people how they can react to this products you know which are household products and those which are like um, um, uh, mobile phones or laptop so this was the experience the government of india wanted to have it you know when they started in 2016 there was only 80 recyclers and they were all in the backyard recycling there was not very good uh, people who were uh, or or the, the 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 professional companies were not involved and uh, after the 2016 everybody whosoever is a business person has started thinking that this is the rule which will help to bring the best technology into this part of the world there is there was no technology till 2016 whether whether it was uh, recycling of consumer durables or it it was just a dismantling and that's it after the dismantling where the material is going there was no transparency there was no traceability of the material so the government's uh, act was to bring this law of 2016 was to have a traceability of the electronic waste how much it is being generated where it is going and who is doing what with the products whether it is staying in india whether it is going out of india so the 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 framework of the policy the the objective of the policy was to traceability of this electronic waste and to make sure that it does not go and reaches to the landfill the main aim was to have a zero zero waste recycling so basically the impact of the government thinking of the niti aayog and the ministry of uh, electronics and it and the ministry of environment was thinking on one direction 
how to do the ele electronic and e-waste into the environment and also to make it economically viable to put up these plants of the recycling. So in the last five years, when it is going uh, to be finished in 2021, you know, the 31st March 21, most of the uh, producers have gone for the uh, extension of their EPR because now there are 1,600 producers. But you can understand with the quantity of 3 million to 4 million metric ton of electronic waste, there are huge producers, there are huge importers. They are not coming into the uh, ambit of this law. But now the government has started thinking that we have to extend this 21 items to 110 items. 75 more items are coming up. And they will that will constitute all the products, where, whether it is uh, microwaves or whether ceiling fans or the uh, what you can say, the power backup, or whether it is uh, electronic, uh, uh, these towers, everything will come. Not at the moment, the air conditioning will remain the same because centralized air conditioning, they are thinking in a different way because that cannot be recycled by the recyclers at this point of time. Now, they are thinking solar panels, they are thinking lithium-ion batteries, they are thinking on ceiling fans, they are thinking on all. These items are going to be added either in September or October. So, a lot of producers will come. Today, only 1,600 producers are there to whom the EPR has been given. There are only 400 recyclers, which is uh, only able to have a capacity of 1 million tons, but still, huge capacity has to be recycled in the formal way. So, the traceability of the e-waste the various laws are in place. The consolidation is happening in this uh, domain that those who have a technology, they will have an upper hand. And those who are doing backyard recycling will not survive. The documentation and the compliance are becoming so strict. The, uh, the CPCB is taking a lot of uh, action against the recyclers who are doing wrong recycling or not doing anything and but publishing the papers and all that. So all these things have in the knowledge of the government, whether it is MOEF or CPCB, they have conducted audits. Three companies have been uh, blacklisted. Eight producers have also been blacklisted in 2019. And uh, there was a lot of penalties were imposed. Similarly, the penalties were imposed on the plastic. So I'm just thinking that plastic EVS is more or less uh, uh, jointly uh, uh, a, a problem. So where there is a e-waste, there are plastic inside. So that and there are hazardous material inside. As uh, Mr. Prashottam has clearly stated, that ROHS has to be taken care of. because why ROHS come? Because the people are not using proper uh, uh, technology to reduce the hazardous material. Our aim is that the environment has to be protected in such a fashion that in years to come, with the technology and with the latest uh, knowledge we should reduce the hazardous material in our products. And now, when we will be reducing the uh, ROHS from the manufacturing of hardware, whether it is laptop, consumer durables, everything, the government is also thinking in a different way. They are saying that any product which is manufactured must be marked and stated that it contains X number or X quantity or X percentage of recycled material. So that is the new thought process. Suppose if I'm manufacturing air conditioner, that compressor or any cables have been recycled and it has been utilized or not. Similarly, that uh, washing machine tub, whether it is manufactured out of the recycled plastic or not. So the, the, the minimum percentage, and it will be exhibited on all the products. Those who are green mind people will only buy those, those products which has a secondary raw material as their raw material. So the secondary raw material has to be utilized in every product of the country which will be producing from 2025 onwards. In the infrastructure, the government has taken a step that 25% of the material has to be recycled material. So the future, will you will find that there will be products which will be coming into the market will have to stay, whether it has a some percentage of uh, green product or recycled product, otherwise their sale will be uh, discontinued. You see that if any material which is coming from abroad is having a generous material, so the dumping is going on. So why this EPR came? 
the EPR came with the objective that any raw material which is being imported, assembled in India has to be recycled to that extent. Today, we are on the 50% of the recycling, 50% of the target. From next year, 22, 23, it will be 70%. So all material has to be recycled with economically viable uh, facilities. The government is thinking to have uh, eco parks in India, whether it is Delhi or Mumbai or wherever the maximum uh, quantity of the e-waste is generated. So this is the new concept which is coming up, uh, uh, Mr. Akram and Mr. Prashottam, for your knowledge. And, you know, the countries which has gone for the circularity are booming. They are happy because they are able to use the product. They are not throwing on the landfill. Today, our children, our uh, people are suffering because of the pollution of the, uh, what you can say, petrol and other things. But there is a major pollution because there is a burning on the dumps. What is burning? It's the, uh, the, the, the cables which are being used and uh, the copper and aluminium and the precious metal is recovered by burning there in the dumps by these kabadiwalas or by these uh, rack pickers. So we have to change our attitude. We have to uh, change the awareness to the people down last leg. That yes, you must not uh, throw this item into, whether it is even a small cable or a small mobile phone, they should not throw it because it has a lead in so many other um, uh, hazardous materials. It's not a waste. It's a resource. Until the time, it is not wasted. So we have to see whether it has a precious metal or it can be recycled properly. You know, the backyard recycling, Mr. Prashottam, I will share with you that uh, when these people were taking out the PCB in uh, uh, Muradabad, they used cyanide. So this potassium cyanide, they are using it to take out uh, the, the gold out of the PCB. Because gold is uh, uh, very, very magnetic to the, uh, to, the, uh, to, the, to the cyanide. And when they are reacted with the cyanide, they are able to take out the gold. But at what cost? What water we are drinking from the Ganga is containing cyanide. cyanide. So yes. actions have been taken by the government. They have banned all these uh, recycling facilities and said that you should not be given this thing. So the no PCB is moving to Muradabad. But, you know, in India, something can happen. But regulation, the EPR resign, which has started from 2016, is helping the recyclers to consolidate, to have a better technology, to have a better investment. Because there is a safeguard for their investment. Otherwise, it was not a safeguard for investing in the recycling. Because today, if somebody invests 15 crores, 20 crores on the plant and machinery, and if you don't get the material, what will happen? So therefore, all these EPRs are helping. There is a generation, there is no doubt that the material is not being generated. The electronic is generated every year, more than 3 million tons. There is no doubt about it. But where it is going is to be regulated now. The formal sector is only getting 30% of the material. 70% is still going into the informal sector. So the need of the R is that the informal sector has to be brought in together with the formal sector so that they can also be given awareness, they should also be given education, they should also be given a little bit technology so that they can dismantle the material and give it to the recycler so that they can recycle properly and they can also have a better uh, standard of life. So all these things we are doing it at our level. But almost all the recyclers have to do that. So our aim is that how the ethical recycling has to take place because we are representing the producers whose EPR has been given to the PRO or to the recycler. If they don't, if they do some fraud, if they do wrong things, they will be, they will, they will not only be hanged, the producer will also come into the problem because the new law is coming into the picture, maybe in August or it may be in September. And uh, Mr. Akram, I will share with you and Mr. Prashottam, I will share you with you that what producers are going to have it in the next uh, three months. Okay. So okay. we have to be very careful on the recycling and on giving the EPR targets to any recycler, whether you give it to XYZ, please make sure that the material is recycled. Today, there is only one company which is taking care of best practices as far as the compliance of e-waste is concerned is the 